Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, January 22nd, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. You know, I love it if our readers pay attention and watch their logs and send us interesting entries that they may find. Latest example came from Vinny and Didier wrote it up earlier today. And what's sort of interesting about it is, well, uh, actually a couple things are interesting here. First of all, the get request uses an IP address in the host header and in the get request itself that does not match the IP address of Vinny's server. Now, this is often used to sort of test for open proxies what makes it a little bit odd is that the end of the URL is what looks like a random string. Now, now Vinny just uh, manually forwarded this request to the IP address it apparently was intended to go to. And what he got back was, well, yet another random string. But uh, this string actually has a little bit structure to it. There are 32 hexadecimal characters and then a base64 encoded part. The base64 encoded Encoded part does decode to an AES-256 encrypted string, at least based on the first six bytes of that string that indicate that it was encrypted using GPG and yes, uh, using a symmetric cipher AES-256. So it could still be a sort of fancier proxy detection system. Often they just uh, try to access Bing or another large public site. Maybe they're trying to evade some honeypots here. But if you have any insights, uh, please uh, let us know. And if you are operating a DNS server or if you're owning a domain, February 1st uh, is going to become an important day, also known as DNS Flag Day. Now, what's happening is that over the years, DNS has undergone some substantial changes. And well, uh, as so often, not everybody sort of has kept up with these changes, which led the, the designers of DNS software to implement a number of workarounds, which in turn has made DNS slower over the years. So February 1st, Many of these workarounds will be removed from popular DNS implementations and also large public DNS operators like, for example, Google Quad9, Cloudflare and the like will no longer support some of these workarounds, which of course could lead to issues resolving your domain if your domain isn't ready for these changes. Now, before you get too worried, the people behind this, which is basically these large DNS operators and the makers of DNS software, they have checked and 95 plus percent of domains will do just fine. But there are those couple percent of domains that uh, really need to make some adjustments and they probably should have made that uh, maybe 10 years ago. One of the biggest issues happens to be extended DNS option zero. Back in the old days when DNS was originally conceived, uh, DNS responses were limited to 512 bytes over UDP. If you wanted more data, then you had to go back via TCP. The main reason for this was to avoid fragmentation. 512 bytes, uh, that's pretty safe and is not going to get fragmented. However, over the years, that has turned out to be a problem because in particular with DNSSEC, many responses exceeded 512 bytes. So now all the clients had to go back via TCP and then uh, retrieve the complete response, sort of you know, requiring two round trips and uh, the entire TCP overhead. So extended DNS option zero allows clients to specify that they are willing to receive UDP responses larger than 512 bytes. And like I said, this has been in place for at least 10 years, I think actually originally this was sort of started 20 years ago. DNS servers and clients are actually less of a problem here. They are implementing this feature 
The problem is that there are still a couple firewalls out there that will block DNS UDP responses that exceed 512 bytes. Now, in addition, there are other options that have been added, uh, like for example, DNS cookies and similar problems can happen here where responses or queries with sort of unknown options as far as the middleware is concerned are being dropped. So. Uh, Go to the site for DNS Flag Day. It's dnsflagday.net. They have a little tool where you can check your domain and make sure everything is properly configured. Well, and the zip for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.